The OC, the definition of idyllic Southern California living. Beautiful weather, gorgeous people, and... There's a body in my son's apartment. There's a what? A body, a dead body. A dead body? This is as diabolical as a murder gets. A shocking crime that sends police on a manhunt for a trained killer. Served in Afghanistan, a combat veteran. Police were looking for an armed man who may be suffering from PTSD. But the odyssey to find their man will unravel a deceitful and deadly plot that no one would see coming. This guy's a monster. He was colder than an iceberg. No feelings, no emotion, just nothing there. The ripple effect and the people that were hurt by this, it goes out forever. Like the tides of the ocean, it all comes back to the shores of Orange County, California, inside Costa Mesa Police Dispatch when that 911 call comes in. There's a body in my son's apartment. There's a what? A body, a dead body. A dead body? Is it someone that you know, sir? I have no idea who she is, but I don't know what's going on. Does your son know who it is? He's not here, Jesus. Do you know where your son is? No, I don't. Costa Mesa police rush to an apartment complex where they make a brutal and bloody discovery. At this point, all we knew was that we had a young female deceased with a gunshot wound to the back of her head. She was in the bedroom lying partially on the bed and uh, her legs on the floor. And there's more, and it's personal. There's things written on, on the back of her shirt, F you, all yours. It really looked like it was your, I, I mean, I hate to say run of the mill, but it looked like a run of the mill domestic violence murder. A purse and wallet near the body reveal the victim's identity. Her name is Julie Kibuishi. Crime reporter Jeremiah Dobra covered the story for the local paper, The Daily Pilot. Julie, by all accounts, was a, a sweet young woman. She was 23, uh, loved dance, it was very talented. But now, Julie is the victim of a violent murder. And the prime suspect is the tenant of the apartment. His name is Sam Hare, a war veteran who's currently MIA. The police zeroed in on Sam pretty quickly. It seemed pretty obvious this girl was found in, her, in his apartment. He uh, seemed like someone who could be capable of killing someone. Texts recovered from Julie's cell phone at the scene suggest a volatile, romantic relationship. The phone is blowing up between the two of them where he is Apparently, sending a message saying, I'm having a hard time, I need a friend to talk to. There's a text from Sam that reads, can you come over tonight at midnight alone? Going out for a bit, very upset, need to talk. A minute later, please don't tell anyone, please. And then, please, no sex. I need to talk to someone. I'm really not doing well. Julie texts, yeah, that's fine, Sam. I'm here for you like family. Authorities believe they've solved the whodunit part of the case. Now, they just need to find Sam. They question Sam's father, who discovered the body and made the 911 call. Mr. Herr was uh, in disbelief, uh, repeatedly said, no, my son couldn't be involved in this, there's no way. We didn't quite believe him at that point, just because we couldn't find him. It was his apartment, dead girl, and it seemed like he was on the run. But bringing in their fugitive won't be easy. He's an army veteran, trained killer, and he's been accused of murder before. Sam Herr had a criminal history that led us to believe that he was a suspect in this crime. When detectives run Sam Herr's record, they're shocked to discover that eight years earlier, he was arrested and charged with capital murder. This, uh pretty quickly got police thinking Sam was the killer, and they started looking for him as their number one suspect. It's an all-points bulletin on the lookout for Sam. We took into account his military background. We didn't know where he'd served in Afghanistan, if he was exposed to PTSD. Uh, we didn't know what the relationship between Julie and Sam was. We didn't know if the message on her sweater was intended for someone third party or for us, the police department. We didn't know if we had a love triangle. Uh, so he was our number one guy. Then police get a tip from Sam's bank. His ATM card is being used at one of the branches, and it appears their wanted man is close by. We know that Sam Herr is basically on the run from this homicide case, and, and we are tracking his credit card activity, and we see that his credit cards are being in, used in the Long Beach area. Investigators pull the bank's surveillance cameras, expecting to see Sam, but they don't. Who is this person using Sam Hare's ATM card? And 
Where's Sam? Minutes later, a second ATM swipe, this time at a pizza place. Police arrive just in time to catch the delivery driver en route. We were able to stop the pizza delivery guy several blocks away, confirm that that was the credit card. It was Sam Hurst's credit card. Now, cops plan to make their own delivery. Next, SWAT teams, helicopters, and dozens of black and white swarm the home of the address of the pizza delivery. But when police knock on the door, they can't believe who answers. That is the moment that the investigation turned.